What's up guys, back with another Twin Motion tutorial. I'm gonna show you how I created this rendering using Twin Motion. Let's get right into the video. Okay, so just kind of give you a little bit of an overview of what we're looking at. We're looking at a different angle, um, trying to get to a good shot, something that um, I think that would look really good for this particular rendering. And I've already captured my shot. I believe I'm going to go with this view here. And if I click on my image and I'm going to turn off my path tracer, but as you can see, we have a nice shot here and our lights are already activated, our area lights. And if you haven't seen that tutorial, I showed that a little bit um, in my other video. So check that out, you know, so you can learn kind of how I lit up my rendering scene. But in this one, I'm really just going to uh, show you path tracer settings. And also I'm gonna show you a really cool filter called hatching that I think uh, add a cool little spin on my rendering. So, all right, guys, don't forget to smash that like button for me and hit the notification bell. Okay. so. Right now, we do have our view here, and you can always rename your view. Just kind of point that out. You go to the three dots here, and my computer is saving right now. Like I said, always, always make sure that you have your uh, savings preference already activated so you won't have any issues uh, down the road when you um, try to render and twin motion crashes or or your computer crashes in any type of way that way you got your work saved and real quick I can show you how to do that so you go to edit go to preference and here where it says settings we're gonna go down and you can go to save and you just want to turn on your auto save um, and you can set it to how many intervals that you want I have mine on 15 and it'll save it at least three times. So just make sure that you do that just for, um, just just to protect your, your, your renderings. All right, so enough of that. I'm gonna go ahead and get right into it. All right, so right now I'm on our, my environment tab. I have it set or right, HDRI and I have it on Skydome. Um, you can do backdrop, but uh, in my opinion, backdrop doesn't normally give you um, the most realistic results. So that's my opinion. If anybody else has um, anything else to say about that, you know, leave a comment down below and um, I'm open to hear your thoughts. All right. So we're going to do Sky Dome and we're going to change our HDRI so we can go to my user library and I have a set of local uh, HDRIs that I've saved to my twin motion local HDRIs folder and I'm gonna use day sky HDRI 058A and I got that one from ambient CG um, which it's an 8k uh, HDRI so I'm gonna drag and drop so as you can see you see it in our background here all right so now that we made that adjustment I'm gonna go ahead and uh, activate my path tracer just to kind of help you follow along so anytime I make any uh, settings adjustments you can see it uh, clear as day when I activate the path tracer okay so my path tracer is activated it is at 512 samples per pixel which is um, very uh, medium setting but I'm gonna go ahead and set it to a high level we'll do 2048 and right now we have our max bounces at 8 and our fireflies at 14 and we have these guys checked we'll come back to this let's just go back to our environment tab and let's make some more adjustments here so for our intensity we do have it at 1 our rotation I'm gonna change my rotation and I want to make that 180 so you see my HDRI in the background has rotated and you start to see my shadows coming in 
and it's starting to come together already and we haven't even got uh, all the way to the end yet so let's look at our details i think we're fine there for our directional light let's keep that checked and let's see what else if anything else we need to change okay so i think we're good in our environment tab so far let's go to our camera and let's look at some of our exposure settings i do have my auto auto exposure check mark so i want to keep that and i'm still going to make some adjustments here so for my exposure i have it at one i actually want to crank that up to two so as you can see that brighten up our scene uh, tremendously and i think it looks good i like uh, the lighting that's coming in so far so we're going to make a little more uh, adjustment so our white balance is at 69 we're gonna make it 62 okay all right so for our tent we're not gonna worry about that for this one and for our local exposure um, so that's gonna highlight in our shadows and details so let's go ahead and check let's go ahead and check mark that let's enable that and as you can see my image has become uh, what they'll call it whitewashed and it doesn't look very good so one of the things that we want to do is crank up our highlights and our shadows so I'm gonna crank up my highlights all the way to one and my shadows all the way to one okay so you can definitely play around with this you know if you want to kind of see how much shadows you actually do want to appear in your scene so I'm just kind of going uh, reverse just to kind of show you uh, what it looks like when it's not cranked all the way up to one so you can definitely play around with that setting just to kind of pin mark a, a good point that you want to keep it at um, I actually kept it at one all right so now in our lens our focal length we have it at 18 and a lot of times in my renderings I like to get up close and we're gonna do 20 all right, so now we are up close and I think it's looking pretty good. Let's look at our vignetting. So our vignetting is set at 50% and a lot of times you can use this uh, preference to darken your corners to kind of highlight your subject. And I say that a lot because it's really important to kind of figure out exactly how you want your renderings to come out. Uh, it could affect the realism of your rendering and it really just depends on uh how you want your how you how do you want your rendering to turn out you know what vibe are you looking for uh what type of character what story are you telling with your renderings so for this one uh the vignetting is at 50 percent i'm going to bring that down i think let's see 25 percent so I'm not going to darken our corners that much on this one. All right, so let's look at our sharpness. Our sharpness is at 50%. I do not want it that high at all. So we're gonna do 20%, okay? So we're gonna check mark our parallelism as well. And our, our parallelism ensures that our vertical parallel lines appear vertical regardless of the viewing angle. So you kind of notice if I uncheck it, you notice our image kind of tilts. It kind of um, it actually puts it back uh, in a vertical parallel line. So it actually looks pretty good. So if you if you don't click parallelism, you'll get a your your image will start to look a little weird. So click on parallelism and that looks good okay so we're we're okay here you can actually go to composition overlays as well if you want to activate your grid to help out with more of your composition if you want to move it over some you know you could do that and you know whatever technique you use uh, you know you can use these squares to actually help you out with that so I'm going to keep it the way I have it. 
and you can use it to your discretion. All right, so let's go back to render tab and we do have our samples per pixel at 2048, which is pretty good. We're gonna change our max bounce from eight to 30. And we have our emissive materials checked and our denoiser checked and we'll leave those checked. And we're gonna change our fireflies to five. All right, guys, don't forget to smash that like button for me, hit the notification bell as well. And also I do have this 3D scene on my website at renderreboot.com. Don't forget to check it out. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. All right, so let's play around a little bit with our contrast. So right now we have our contrast at 50%. Let's change that to 38%. All right, so now let's look at our saturation and we're gonna make that 55%. All right, so now we have our color gradient and I did put a color gradient on this. As you know, you have different styles, different um, options that Trip Twin Motion does give you, which I think looks pretty good. I went to Vice 2. So I'm gonna go to Vice 2 on this one. All right, so Vice 2 actually looks pretty good. I really like um, my lighting. I like how my image is turning out very well. So here on image, right now it's at full HD. I have it at 8K. Anytime that you have a higher output, 8K up and up to 16K or 64K, um, Twin Motion will prompt you to use tile rendering for high resolution. So we go to details and we can check mark tile rendering. Okay, so now one of the things that I do want to show you is the hatching pattern that I use in FX. So I want to go back to our FX tab and I just want to show you a really cool filter and it was the hatching option here i think that's a pretty cool looking rendering i think that this could look good on different occasions and it just all depends but i thought that this was a cool filter so just want to show you how easy it is to transform your renderings and use the filter to your advantage to actually come up with some pretty cool renderings all right, so guys, I hope that was helpful. Don't forget to smash that like button for me, hit the notification bell, and uh, we'll be back with another one.